Ignorance about the Catholic Church often leads to misguided and oblique statements. However, it is crucial to understand that the Church's teachings have stood the test of time and continue to be upheld today. These teachings find their strength in three supporting pillars, sacred tradition, holy scripture, and the magisterium. In this captivating video, we will delve into each of these pillars, unraveling their interconnectedness and how they work harmoniously to establish the unshakable foundation of our faith. Join us on this enlightening journey as we explore the profound truths that underpin the Catholic Church. The first pillar is sacred tradition. Sacred tradition is the invaluable legacy left by Jesus Christ and the Apostles. Unlike other teachings that rely on written texts, sacred tradition is a living transmission of the Gospel message. Jesus during his time on earth did not read or write books. Instead he imparted his teachings through his words and actions which were then passed down by the Apostles. To ensure the preservation and continuity of this divine message, the Apostles appointed bishops as their successors, relinquishing their own positions as teachers. Sacred tradition is not a mere human tradition or customary habit, it is the authoritative teaching that originates from the Apostles themselves who received it directly from Jesus and were guided by the Holy Spirit. Through this sacred transmission, the Word of God entrusted to Jesus was faithfully distributed in its entirety to their successors. These successors, in turn, have the responsibility to preserve, explain, and spread this divine message with unwavering fidelity. It is important to note that Jesus did not criticize all human customs, but rather those that contradicted God's commands. Sacred tradition therefore stands apart from mere human traditions. It is a sacred and unbroken chain of teachings that ensures the gospel message remains alive and vibrant within the church. Through the authority of the Holy Spirit, Sacred tradition continues to guide and inspire believers, providing them with a profound connection to the teachings and example of Jesus Christ. Sacred tradition and Holy Scripture are always in harmony, never in conflict. The Apostles' teachings on the Trinity of God, Purgatory and the Virginity of Mary have been unequivocally conveyed through tradition, aligning perfectly with the teachings of the Holy Scriptures. Although these specific doctrines may not be explicitly mentioned in the Holy Bible, it instructs us to honor and uphold the traditions that have been passed down to us, whether through written or oral means, 2 Thessalonians 2.15 and 1 Corinthians 2. By embracing both sacred tradition and holy scripture, we gain a comprehensive understanding of our faith and ensure its continuity throughout generations. Second pillar is holy scripture. The holy scripture is the divine revelation of God's plan of salvation for humanity. It is through the gospel that God chose to make his intentions known to us. This gospel was communicated to us in two forms, through oral tradition and through written texts. The apostles who were entrusted with the teachings of Christ, shared his message verbally, recounting their personal experiences with him and the guidance of the Holy Spirit. Additionally, under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, these apostles and other figures wrote down these sacred messages, which eventually became the books of the Holy Bible. Thus, the Holy Bible is the tangible result of God's message being recorded for future generations. The Catechism of the Catholic Church affirms that God in His divine wisdom chose certain individuals to be the sacred writers of the Holy Scriptures. These writers were inspired by God Himself, guided by the Holy Spirit, and endowed with unique abilities and skills. As a result, every word written by these inspired authors carries the weight of the Holy Spirit's truth. It is crucial to recognize that the Old and New Testaments which make up the Holy Scriptures are not mere human writings. They are the direct result of God's inspiration and intervention. In fact, the Catechism states that everything stated by these inspired authors should be regarded as a statement of the Holy Spirit. The significance of this cannot be overstated. The Holy Scriptures being divinely inspired hold a special place in our faith. They are not only a collection of historical accounts and moral teachings, but are also a source of infallible truth. These sacred books have been carefully chosen by God himself to guide us on our journey toward salvation. It is not uncommon to come across Christians who claim that their salvation was solely achieved through the scriptures. However, it is important to note that the Holy Bible itself does not endorse this belief. In fact, the opposite holds true as the scriptures themselves cannot be used to justify one's actions according to personal interpretation, 2 Peter 1 20, 21. There is a potential for misinterpretation, 2 Peter 3 15, 16, which further emphasizes the need for guidance beyond the scriptures. 
Even in the early centuries the church did not adhere to this theory. The concept of only scripture or sola scriptura emerged during the Reformation in the 1500s, but upon closer examination, it becomes evident that it was not even rooted in scripture. The Holy Bible is a complex text that requires interpretation, as it can lead to diverse understandings. Throughout history we have witnessed the emergence of numerous new churches, all claiming to follow sola scriptura and being inspired by the Holy Spirit. However, this diversity in interpretations is concerning, as it highlights the fact that these churches have differing understandings of the Holy Scriptures. If we hold the belief that the Holy Spirit does not promote division, 1 Corinthians 14 33, and that God does not create conflicts in matters of faith, then it becomes clear that the theory of sola scriptura is flawed. The third pillar is the magisterium, comprised of the successors of the apostles, holds a crucial role in authentically interpreting the Word of God. Their authority, bestowed upon them by the apostles themselves, is exercised in the name of Jesus Christ. It is important to note that the magisterium does not place itself above the Word of God, but rather serves it diligently. Their purpose is to ensure that the Word of God is passed down accurately and without distortion. With the guidance of the Holy Spirit, the magisterium led by the Pope and his assistant bishops works tirelessly to safeguard and protect the Word of God from any misinterpretation. It is crucial to bear in mind that the Church predates the New Testament books. The authors and sacred writers of these books were devout members of the Church, divinely inspired by God, much like the sacred writers of the Old Testament. The Magisterium, under the guidance of the Holy Spirit, possesses the authority to interpret both Testaments. The Magisterium plays a crucial role in comprehending the entirety of Holy Scripture. The Magisterium is bestowed with the infallible gift of teaching, ensuring that their official teachings align with the doctrines of the Church and are free from any heretical notions. This gift serves as the realization of Christ's promise to send His Holy Spirit guiding the apostles and their successors towards absolute truth. John 16 12, 13. To truly comprehend the Bible, one must acknowledge its inseparable connection to tradition. Tradition serves as the very backdrop against which the Bible gains its meaning and significance. Attempting to interpret the Bible without considering tradition would be akin to grasping it without its essential context. The magisterium, as the authoritative body, holds the responsibility of creating, compiling, and safeguarding the Bible. It is through the teachings of the Magisterium that we come to understand which books are included in the Bible, such as the Epistle of James, and which are not, like the Epistle of Barnabas. Interestingly, the Bible does not explicitly outline its own composition or distinguish its own parts. If we choose not to have faith in the Magisterium of the Church, it implies that we are also free to doubt the Bible which was put together by the Magisterium. This is because the Bible we rely on is a product of the Magisterium's work. Conversely, if we have faith in the Magisterium, it follows that we must also have faith in the Bible as it was compiled by them. This means that we should strive to comprehend the Bible from the perspective of its compiler. The Church as a pillar of truth consists of three elements, namely sacred tradition, holy scripture, and the Church Magisterium. God has graciously bestowed upon His Church the means to reveal His plan of salvation. Through sacred tradition, holy scripture and the magisterium, God effectively communicates His truth. It is crucial to bear in mind the words of the Apostle Paul, who proclaimed that the Church is the embodiment of the living God and the steadfast support of truth. 1 Timothy 3.15 The Church is a divine institution where God's revelation is manifested through sacred scripture and sacred tradition. It is crucial for us to acknowledge and respect both scripture and tradition as they originate from God himself. When we engage with the Holy Scriptures, particularly in matters of faith and morals, it is essential to prioritize the interpretation of the Church's magisterium over our personal understanding. They have been entrusted with the authentic interpretation of God's revelation. However, this does not diminish our enthusiasm for reading the Holy Bible. Therefore, the Church stands as a steadfast pillar of truth, encompassing three vital elements, sacred tradition, holy scripture, and the magisterium. These three components fulfill God's promise to guide His Church towards the complete truth, John 16 12, 13, which will endure until the end of time.